Joining us now is Nancy Wozniak, who just happens to be a learning architect within the Faculty Center at TLT. Nancy, can you answer our question? What is a learning architect? Well, an architect takes raw materials and designs a structure or an environment around those raw materials. Building architect would design a uh, living structure, a housing structure, or a housing environment. A learning architect takes materials, course materials, and designs a learning structure or a learning environment. So, okay. so I've been talking to Joe about the, the environment, mm -hmm. the structure that they've put in place in their class right. um, that I would consider active learning. Can you more broadly define what active learning is? Active learning is student-centered learning, which our organic chemistry uh, professors are top-notch, uh, just an amazing learning environment they have for their such a large classroom. Student-centered learning activities that let the students have some control and over their learning process as opposed to the passive learning, the sage on the stage, the, the teacher on Charlie Brown, the wah, 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 wah. Mm -hmm. It's very active and it was Joe who told me uh, their lecture hall is a happening place and it is happening. Okay. And why is it more effective for the students than, I mean, with a lecture you can get a lot of very concentrated information and, uh, and that's very useful, you just regurgitate that. Why is active learning better than that? What you just said, you just regurgitate that. It is, it, you don't internalize okay. uh, what's happening. And you know yourself in a lecture, when you're listening to a lecture, uh, the attention span, even if you're trying to pay attention, every 10 minutes you're fading out. And then towards the end of a lecture, you have three minutes and your students are going in and out. Uh, with active learning, your students are involved. They're, they're using the clickers in, in your area. At any time, they know you can call out a number and they're uh, and the they're going on the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, they're having fun. They're in groups. But there's over 300, 500 students in sure. a lecture. And they're divided in the groups. And the TAs are talking to them. But the students, you're asking the students to answer the questions and work through the questions. I, I've, I've seen uh, even the biology area, they are actually broke up into teams of 20, 30 students, working a problem collaboratively. So as they talk and discuss, they're internalizing their learning. They have control over their learning process. It's not rote memory. Okay. So assuming a faculty member has been inspired by our wonderful guest mm -hmm. to, to try and implement some of these active learning approaches in the classroom, what would the first step be? How would you help them get started? The first step is know your student audience, know how they learn. We're all learning. If you're an educator, we're all learning architects. We need to create learning environments according to the way our students learn. Uh, and, and you were saying, Joe, that you, every semester is different. You, you oh, that's right. We're always changing things. Always changing things. And that's one way I can help or someone in the faculty center can help because it, it, it helps to brainstorm mm -hmm. it out. And we can, we can brainstorm with faculty, go over maybe some of the things that didn't, didn't work out, maybe some of the classroom management areas or issues that need some tweaking. It helps to talk it out. So you don't someone. sort of take over the process. Absolutely. You're, you're more like a consultant. It's the faculty member who's still in charge, still leading the process, Absolutely. picking and choosing strategies that you might suggest. We exactly were there to brainstorm and maybe maybe give some ideas, um, but you have to tailor it to those students and to your 
teaching style. So the, the professor is still in control. Uh, and it can be a little frightening at first to let go of hanging on that podium and getting down and walking. Don't you think of walking oh, yes. around with the students and breaking it down into chunks? That's where I always find it's helpful to talk it over with other professors or other professionals in, in the field. Great. And that's what we're here for. Great. Well, thank you both for being on the show today. Thank you, Rob. If you have any questions for either of our guests, please uh, use the blog on the TLT website at tlt.stonybrook.edu, where we'll also post direct contact information if you want to talk directly to either Nancy or Joe about their experiences. I hope to see you again on the next show of Innovations in Education.